This is a picture of a man who clearly can't keep himself out of the frying pan. Yes, that is Sean Marks, the GM slash president of your Brooklyn Nets, which of course is not the topic of today's underrated NBA show. No, we are going to talk about the unbelievably hot Houston Rockets who are absolutely streaking towards the end of the finish line for this particular NBA season. That is the topic on the all new underrated NBA show. All right. As always, I am Dave DeBaugh coming to you live and on tape from the heart of the Silicon Valley. All right, Sean Marks, I kid. I like to kid Sean Marks, but I mean, seriously, with everything that has gone on with Sean Marks and the Brooklyn Nets over the last five years, for him to then decide to not make this particular deal, which uh, was leaked uh, a little earlier in the day, it involved Mikael Bridges, a bunch of draft picks, and of course, Jalen Green going to the actual Brooklyn Nets, a deal in which he turned down. And as soon as he turned that deal down, just like a month and a half later, Jalen Green is starting to look like an all-star. In the month of March, Jalen Green has averaged just under 28 points a game. That's right. Shooting uh, 51% from the field and nearly, and this is the kicker here, and nearly 42% from the three-point arc. Jalen Green, and if you've watched any Houston Rockets basketball over the last couple months, it has actually, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this, has turned into must-see TV. Now, I know Shangoon is hurt, uh, Whitmore is out. Uh, They are missing, obviously, some key ingredients on their team right now. But Jalen Green has absolutely put this Houston Rockets team right on his shoulders. Now, you know, sometimes in life, something happens, like in your job uh, or in your career, that will change the way you look at things. And I think this particular deal that didn't happen might have actually lit the fire under Jalen Green that he ultimately needed. You know, sometimes in the NBA, as well as other sports, really good basketball players and really good football players and really good baseball players don't excel uh, initially. And a lot of times they end up just sort of allowing other players on their team to excel. And they don't have that Mamba mentality yet right when they enter the league. Now, Jalen Green averaged over 22 points a game last season. And I remember coming into this season thinking he was going to go north of that. But that hasn't happened. I mean, at least until the month of March. In the for the entire season, Jalen Green's averaging just under 20 points a game, down basically 3 points over what he did last season. So what happened? What went wrong early in the season and what's happening now that has shifted his attitude because If you were to sit down and watch a game from early in the season, if you were to watch Jalen Green play, you would see him deferring often to other players. Now, I know that Shangun has been out, and the style of basketball that they're going to play without Shangun in is different, and it is certainly more wide open. You know, the same thing happened with Anthony Edwards and the Minnesota Timberwolves and Carl Anthony Towns last season. When the cat got hurt last season, uh, the Ant-Man certainly excelled and became a better player. And we've seen what the Ant-Man has done this year, regardless of whether or not Cat has played or not played, it is now officially his team. I think we're seeing something similar happen with one Jalen Green. I was super excited when Jalen Green entered the NBA. I was super excited to watch Jalen Green play a lot during his rookie year. It is finally nice, and I only hope that this not only carries over through the rest of the season, but into the years to come, because Jalen Green is a talent. He just needs to, uh, if you will, have that Mamba mentality on a night-in and night-out basis in the NBA. 
Now look, 82 games is a lot, and I get it, and you're not always going to bring it every game. But he certainly could bring it to most of the games that he plays in, and if he were to do that, he could potentially turn into one of the faces of the NBA in the future. Now, as for the Golden State Warriors, and as you all know, I'm based here in the Silicon Valley, or as I like to call it, the Silicon Valley. And I have to say, you know, the Warriors are in real trouble. They are absolutely in real t- trouble. Now, I'm assuming the Houston Rockets are going to win tonight. And if they win tonight, that means they're going to be just a half game behind the Golden State Warriors with about nine, nine slash 10 games to go in the season for both teams. If you were to ask me who I think is actually going to end up in that 10th spot right now, from what I've seen out of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and and Draymond Green and the rest of that supporting cast, I'm not seeing it. Now, clearly, there's more talent on this Golden State Warriors basketball team. This Golden State Warriors basketball team should not finish anything short of 10th this year. But something isn't right with the Warriors right now. And this is a perfect opportunity for uh, um, the young um, Houston Rockets team led by Iming Yudoko. <laughs> I always butcher his name, but uh, for Yudoko and, and the rest of his coaching staff to actually really leave an impression on this Houston Rockets team. Getting this team all the way back into the 10th spot would be huge. It would be huge dividends, not just for this year, but for the future of this Houston Rockets team. The confidence that would come from that would be absolutely huge for the Houston Rockets. All right, I want to know what you think, North America. I'm calling it right now, barring any more major injuries. And for God's sakes, Rockets, don't lose at home to Portland tonight. I'll have all sorts of egg on my face for doing this video if you do that. Ultimately, the Rockets are going to be Portland tonight. They're going to be a half game out. And I'm going to go and call the shot now. I'm going to call this that the Houston Rockets are going to finish in 10th and the Warriors are going to finish in 11th out of the play-in possibilities. All right, North America, I want to hear from you. Tell me what you think about what i just said ridiculous or not ridiculous i want to hear from you go ahead and uh, drop in a message if you're watching this on youtube and uh, or listening across our various podcast network all right as always for the underrated nba show I'm Dave DeBaugh wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing day. And to the guitar riffs, (laughs) we go.